We're back from the future, or at least a preview of it. Here's a roundup of our insights from CES 2020. Stick around for your daily charge. Good morning and welcome to the Daily Charge. It's Tuesday, January 21st. I'm Alfred Ng. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. And let's wind things up for 2020. This is our first show back since CES, and boy, is there a lot to unpack. Uh, My experience was full of fury, but I'm hoping we can start the show with some good news. Uh, Ben, please tell me you had a different experience uh, covering CES. Yes, I had fun, as usual. Oh, so you actually liked it. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a quieter show. I think we would probably both agree about that. There were a couple of standouts that um, are worth pointing out. I thought Impossible Pork was probably the most interesting thing. But in addition to that, Impossible Bacon... Uh, was what I think everybody was really hoping for. So. Did you have any of it? Or? No, I did not. I didn't try it. But, you know, I'm I'm somebody because I was raised kosher. I didn't actually have uh, pig products until later in life. Mm-hmm. And I can I can attest to the fact that they're delicious. So I guess if more people want to eat this stuff and it's vegetarian, then that's great. And and it's a nice change of pace to actually do like food tech at CES. Was that, was that really the, other the other biggest stuff. thing that stuck out to you at CES? I thought that was interesting. I thought neon was interesting mm-hmm. because it was kind of like, well, what what is it? There mm-hmm. was some interesting Amazon news, too, where they basically sold a bunch more Alexa products. Um, but other than that, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't like a huge show in that regard. There were also like foldable screen PCs. I got a chance Mm -hmm. to look at those and those were also uh, pretty interesting. So kind of all over the place. Yeah, I I did feel it was a very, very much a boring future that they were kind of showing off their neon. I have no idea where that's planning on going. I mean, if it's going the way that Bixby went, I don't care. I I do not care about it. Um, Yeah. And I I think the standout from last year's CES was also like impossible meat, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. They, they're they doing a good job of like showing themselves mm-hmm. off at the show because it's gadgets, 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 and mm-hmm. then, you know, like highly processed veggie food. So yeah. uh, it, it's easier for them to do standout stuff. So it, there was it, also, there was also like, it's worth mentioning like the sex tech stuff too, that was newer at CES this year. And it actually wasn't, it didn't resonate nearly as much as I expected it to. Mm-hmm. There was such a brouhaha about it ahead of time. And then they presented it at the show. I think they were in like a quiet section of the same. They were in the Expo. health and fitness area. The, the, yeah. yeah, the health and wellness section. Yeah. And, you know, OK, they, they showed it off. There were there was some stuff written about it, but it, it I don't think that it really like it wasn't it didn't get as much attention as I think it was expected. So what was your high and low of CES? Oh, uh, I, I liked seeing the foldable screen PCs. Mm-hmm. I thought that was an interesting idea. So I guess that would be a high sort of mm-hmm. um, a low. I, I don't know. There was. I wish there was more to it as far as the the voice wars. Uh, it was a little bit quieter this year, so we'll see if they come back with more next year. All right. Uh, I guess I'll just go with my low. I don't think I really had a high, but uh, this is this is what frustrated me so much at the tech show. Uh, facial recognition. Uh, was everywhere. Uh, I saw it in a mirror. I saw it in a, in a storage box that was used for marijuana. Uh, I saw. I, I saw it used on me. Which. Which. N- no. Don't do that. Uh, we visited Konami's headquarters in Las Vegas, and they decided it'd be a fun surprise to make a profile on me using my face from my CNET profile. Uh, this is a massive invasion of privacy to me, but the company saw it and they thought, hey, uh, your photo is public online and we have complete rights to do this. Yes, it is legal. Yeah, it's they completely are, they legal allowed to, to do, do it, which is which is interesting, which um, some might argue is the problem. Um, and this kind of brings me to the next story. One of the wildest things I read this weekend, uh, the New York Times reported on a facial recognition company called Clearview, which is partnered with hundreds of police departments across the U.S. Most facial recognition works this way. Uh, you have a photo in a database and it scans faces in public, it matches that person with that photo. So unless you're already logged in there, uh, it doesn't really like work on you. Uh, Clearview works in a much uh, different way. Uh, the entire internet is basically the database. So uh, the Clearview AI had basically scraped Facebook, Venmo, YouTube, anywhere where there's a photo uh, available online attached to a name publicly, it has it. So the way that Clearview would work is uh, if I took a photo of you, I w- it would scour this massive database that's that already scraped the, the entire internet to match it with somebody instead. So that is the future that we have to look forward to with AI and facial recognition. So if I'm reading into this correctly too, Clearview, what they did goes against the terms and conditions of a mm-hmm. lot of those websites. But again, it's completely legal for them to do that. Like they were able to create this database 
database, I believe, of billions of different photos. And, and it doesn't go against anything from the government. The government can't say that, oh, you weren't allowed to do that. No. Yeah. There are no laws on uh, facial recognition, at least federally. There are laws in Illinois and Texas, but this is different where they're sca- it's scraping the website. Like, yeah, it, it's perfectly legal. Like, Well, there are also some additional laws in what? Somerville, Massachusetts. That's uh, different. San Francisco. That's yeah. specifically for police yeah. uh, are banned from using facial recognition. So those are some additional layers. But yeah, there are some pretty gaping holes here as well. Yeah. So it, the, the way that this works is is more like if I if I had taken a photo of you, it's it's like Shazam for faces where it, How it exciting. just looks through this whole database. Like, oh, yeah. And then it'd find like maybe your photo on LinkedIn, it'd find your photo on Facebook. More likely than not, it would probably find your photo from this video and be able to say, oh, that is Ben of CNET. He uh, covers Amazon and I'm not going to say on air where you live or anything like that, but yeah. like it would be able to like note that detail um, and, and connect with you there. Yeah, we have an editor that works here that is extremely suspicious of getting his photo taken and putting it anywhere online. Mm-hmm. And I used to think he was super paranoid, but apparently... He was very much onto something. Yeah, I was looking for my ski mask before I came onto this show, but uh, I think I threw it out by accident. But um, yeah, I mean, that's just how it is. We are all logged in uh, some database for the future where anyone can find us, which um, that that is the future. Um, I mean, obviously, there are privacy advocates working against it and, and, you know, lawmakers who are hoping to establish rules against this. But Honestly, like the, the the way it is right now, they can just do all this, and that's just how it is. Yeah. Uh, so if you have your photo online, um, you know, most more than likely you're being tracked. Uh, as always, let's uh, take some time to turn to our audience and see what your takes what takeaways are on today's topics, or you know, just let us know what your overall highlights and lowlights from CES were, uh, were this year. You can sound off in the comments or add us on Twitter, and we will see how much we can tackle with the time we have left. Uh, BVG, what's up? First and foremost, welcome back, everybody. It's been nice. What we've been gone for like seriously a solid month, right? Well, I mean, see, we had a show in. during CES. Well, that's yeah. true. I've been gone for a solid month. A normal, like regular stream show here where we actually take Q and A. It's been a minute. Yeah. Uh, but glad to have everybody back. Hope everyone had a good New Year. Um, hope everyone got something out of CES this year. I was collectively just overwhelmingly disappointed hmm. in CES. I think the only thing I saw there that was kind of cool was that tattoo gun uh, airsoft like that did look kind of cool that was kind of temporary amazing. tattoo thing Th- it that's was... literally all it is. okay yeah all right kind of gimmick um but yeah this this tech. facial recognition stuff you're talking about alfred before we farm it out to the audience that's scary stuff like we're really getting into some minority report territory stuff here right yeah i mean i wouldn't compare it to minority report just because i i i think like hollywood has like a certain effect on like what people think about technology and i don't want to like bring it to that level but i mean yeah we're, we're we're certainly seeing like facial recognition being implemented in everything and a lot of the times it'll be proposed as like this convenience right where they'll say oh it's much easier now for you to get into your building uh, or you know or into your phone that's yeah. how a lot of people really yeah. associate facial recognition is is that you use face id which yeah. a lot of people use but i think it's, like, it's extremely important to consider like how much time are you actually saving by like looking at your phone rather than typing oh, you in like your in, pin you mentioned yeah. it in your story sometimes you save a minute sometimes you save half a minute maybe it's useful for people maybe it isn't i think the benefit here is is that like so voice technology is something that i'd been writing about for four years and it's like oh this is so much easier and you can operate all this stuff around your house. There was this obvious benefit that was being presented. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, all the nasties came out about it later that uh, they're they're tracking all this information about you and oh like here are all these problems that exist with smart home some of that was obviously being written about but it really blew up last year with facial recognition the good news is is that at least we're having this conversation now Mm -hmm. while the genie is sort of still in the bottle i think voice recognition is very different from facial recognition in a way though where like at least with voice recognition some part of it is still like voluntary right like you're buying these smart assistants uh, and putting them in your homes and installing them because that's something that you want um, in your house. Facial recognition is not that. Facial recognition is very much like you can make the argument like while well, you're buying this weed storage box with like right, facial but recognition but a lot of it, it is being done to you yeah. in public places yeah. or by the law enforcement. That's a really good point and that's why, you know, for instance, like there are already congressional hearings mm-hmm. about this. Like maybe you can offer some yeah. 
points that they've been talking about there. I mean, I I just want to raise this point that it's like, don't let this idea of convenience, like make you like normalize facial recognition for you where in in the sense, like you ever remember like those old infomercials where it's like, has this ever happened to you? And it's a scenario that never happens. Like who, who cuts a carrot that way? And then like ends up breaking the whole like cutting board. You know what I mean? And like, that just, that just doesn't happen. But like these commercials and like these companies will just say like, yeah, that's a big problem. And like our new technology will solve it. Like I, I I spoke with one company that talked about how, uh, you know, they're using it at like burger places right now. And they're saying, you know, this remembers people and remembers their burger orders as if that's like a a major problem for people like going to restaurants or it's like, oh man, I hate it when they don't remember my burger order. Like the, that's not like a problem. And now it's being presented as one. So like facial recognition can come in and say, this is a solution for, for you all. That's a good point. Yeah. More questions. Well, okay. So what I wanted to kind of talk about with this is, um, hang on, I'm trying to like get my, my thoughts wrapped around. Uh, I mean, uh, I guess what I wanted to ask, is there any legislation in place looking to try to corral this? Maybe not stop it necessarily, but, what kind of actions are taken either in the private or the public sector? Because this is this is scary. Like, this is straight up yeah, scary. Yeah, so most of the laws on facial recognition currently that are being proposed are about, like, government use of it. So there's one called, like, the No Biometric uh, Barriers Act, uh, which is about saying that you can't use facial recognition um, in public housing, which, like, a few uh, public housing, like, places in, in the U.S., like, are using um, to keep track of, like, residents coming in and out of the building, that and kind of stuff. people that aren't supposed to be there, which does happen sometimes. Yeah, but that's, that's like, public housing. Uh, there's there's one that is was proposed uh, back in November by two senators uh, called the Facial Recognition Technology Warrant Act, which basically says that they have to get a warrant to use facial recognition. Mm. That's just the bare minimum level of it, where it's like, it's saying, no, you can still use facial recognition. You can still like keep track of all these people and and use this technology to to follow them around, but you need to get a warrant for it. Well, that does ensure that, you know, privacy experts uh, or sorry, privacy advocates have been talking a lot about protests. Mm -hmm. So at least you wouldn't be able to get a warrant or conceivably you wouldn't be able to get a warrant. Here's Here's the thing. It's only if you're using it to track somebody for more than 72 hours. So would you be able to track a protest? I mean, like, that's, I mean, that's well, a the, lot of times the thing what's is, being is that, like, you don't issue. You don't use facial recognition in that context. You just use it to identify somebody and that's it. Mm-hmm. You're not using it for like three days, like worth of time. Yeah. Um, and so th- that's the problem with that bill um, that a lot of privacy advocates have brought up. Um, and it, like I said, it's mostly focused on like governments using it. So in San Francisco and Somerville, Massachusetts, Oakland as well, um, they, they have passed like local ordinances that ban the use of facial recognition by the government, um, by like police or, or, you know, city hall. I don't know what they would use it for, but it's basically government can't use it. That doesn't prevent like businesses from right. using it. That doesn't prevent like, you know, just any, like advertisers from using it or anything like that. And I think that's one of the things that's not really addressed uh, when it comes to facial recognition. Uh, obviously, the consequences are much higher when it comes to governments using facial recognition than, than a business where, you know, if 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 facial if a government uses facial recognition and they have like a 80 percent like error rate, that's obviously a much higher like there's much more things at stake, right? Like and if getting I'm getting arrested and right. like, oh, they don't recognize me for my burger order. Yeah, you like, got too much catch up or yeah. something. Yeah. Uh, here's a really good one from our friend Storm King. Uh, where does something like ring doorbells fall on the spectrum as far as facial recognition and good responsibility question. goes? You know, someone should look into this ring company. I've been hearing some interesting things about so that. So Nest, by the way, already uses some facial recognition yeah. in their video doorbells. Uh, and it's basically for whitelisting as opposed to blacklisting. Ring does not currently use any facial recognition in their doorbells, but I'll let Alfred take the rest. Yeah. So Ring has a uh, research and design department in Ukraine where they have looked into using facial recognition for their devices in multiple letters to senators who have raised concerns about Ring uh, because of the privacy issues surrounding the company. They have mentioned that, you know, they are considering facial recognition because its rivals like Nest are also using it, uh, but they do not currently use it. Uh, That being said, though, 
you don't need to have facial recognition like embedded within the, the device to use facial recognition on it. That's actually how a lot of companies are using facial recognition now. There's like hundreds of these old cameras that do not have facial recognition capabilities, but you can just install software to analyze the video on its right. own. Uh, several police departments have already used ring footage to do this. Uh, in research for another article that I'm currently working on about facial recognition, they were able to, one school was able to put um, somebody on on a, on a watch list on their facial recognition program through footage that they got like off a ring camera. Mm. So yeah, I mean, ring is ring is in there. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's important to mention for like just broader context, how this type like facial recognition technology works. Usually what you get is a confidence rate. It, it, it comes off as a percentage. So if we're scanning Alfred's face, the, the AI or the computer is going to spit out like a, we're 99% confident yeah. that this is Alfred or we're 60% confident this is Alfred. So when I worked on a story last year about this, um, the, the police, uh, the sheriff's office in uh, Oregon who was using it said that they didn't even pay attention to the confidence rates because they just basically used facial recognition as a law enforcement tool. It kind of gave them a digital lineup of folks and then they had to confirm from other methods mm -hmm. to actually confirm that it was a specific person and that greatly reduces the chances yeah. of you actually getting the wrong person. And, and just talking about confidence rates in general, uh, so as Ben had mentioned, I was covering a facial recognition hearing last week uh, where uh, NIST, which is like the National Institute of like Standards for like Technology in the US, That's that might not be the actual abbreviation, but they develop like standards for tech in the US. Uh, they had just released a study on uh, facial recognition algorithms and like racial bias. Um, the majority of the ones that they looked at, they found that they were misidentifying uh, people of color 10 to 100 times more often than they were for Caucasian people, mostly because like that's what those algorithms were trained on. Um, so on, on that, like if you do not look like the average white person, like facial recognition will more than likely not get you of 99% confidence. Right. And so that's a very important statistic for if law enforcement ends up utilizing yeah. this to obviously be aware of. So, yeah. Before I move on, let's shout out some of our old friends who've come back. Adrian, Kashif, Eric, Ryan, Timothy, Storm King, as mentioned before. Uh, who else we got? Datcher's in the chat. Datch. Uh, thanks, everybody, for uh, coming back and joining us as we trudge along through into 2020 and its overwhelmingly underwhelmingness. Uh, we only have a couple minutes left, and here's another really good question. Where are we with fooling facial recognition? Timothy brings up those uh, visor things you have with the LED strips on there that shine the light that kind of fool the camera from recognizing your face. Where is the technology either legitimate or otherwise as far as fooling facial recognition tech, Alfred? I mean, that's cool. Like they ha I, I've, I've seen a hat that like has flaps on the inside of it and then you can let it down. There's like a face, like Whoa, someone sweet. else's face on there. Like like butterflies do that to look like owls? I guess, yeah. Um, I mean, oh, that's sweet. cool, but like, I don't think that that's what people should be doing. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I, I think it's much better to take on like the infrastructure and the system before it's widely adopted rather than, you know, scurrying around trying to hide on an individual level. It's a good point. Uh, I think in this country, people should have a right to wear the visor if they want to wear the visor. And they should also have a right to not wear the visor if they don't want to wear the visor. And so I, I think that I'm not going out on a limb here saying that we should have a regulatory uh, framework to ensure that people don't have to walk around wearing, I don't know, stickers on their face or visors yeah. or what have you to fool facial recognition. Uh, so, it, you know, and I would just find it fantastically annoying if I was walking around the mall, if I do ever go to the mall and getting, you know, personalized advertising, going back to the minority mm -hmm. report issue that, you know, you're getting your face scanned all the time w without your, your specific wanting that to happen. Yeah. And then there was, there was, um, something that I had seen a few years ago where it was for online photos. So they couldn't scrape that kind of data where, because the way facial recognition work isn't exactly like they take your photo and like, oh, we're matching with that photo. It's like once they scan your photo, it's like it's like little dots on your face. So it's like, oh, his eyes are this far apart. And like what that's how they kind of recognize right. it. And that's like, how they can tell if you grew a beard or whatever. Yeah, like even yeah. if I had sunglasses on, it'd detect me still because it's like it works like off yeah, geometric the bridge of your shape. nose and all that. other. So stuff. this this app that I was looking at um, basically distorted your photos, but like you still looked like you, but like just like all the points that facial recognition like you 
usually scans. It so like weird. messed with the pixels of it, so it wouldn't be able to pick that up. Um, again, I guess it's cool, but like that's not like a society that I'd want to live in where I have to take all these precautions to 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 live like that. Yeah. All right. Thanks for excellent reporting as always. That's all the time we got for our inaugural 2020 episode as we're back into the swing of things, but we are back into the swing of things. And we'll be back again tomorrow and Thursday and so on and so forth until this old dusty road runs out of room for us. Uh, we are going to be continuing to try some new things uh, this new season. Um, that's been an ongoing mandate pretty much since day one. So just be on your toes. We're looking for feedback. We're looking for input. Uh, feel free to sound off with ideas. This is kind of a Petri dish of a show. So, um, yeah, let's see where 2020 takes us. But thanks again, as always, to everybody for joining. And until next time, Alfred, go ahead and take us on out. Yeah, uh, we'd appreciate it if you would subscribe and click on the notification bell if you haven't already uh, so you can join us weekday mornings and be a part of the show. Uh, Also, feel free to head on down to the show description where you can find links to today's stories and also every place you can subscribe to our audio podcasts if you'd rather take the show on the go. Uh, For The Daily Charge, I'm Alfred. I'm Ben. Thanks for joining us. 